This is a 32 gigabyte kit of 6800 megahertz DDR5 memory from G-Skill. It's part of their Trident Z5 RGB series aimed at the Intel platform. It's got full XMP 3.0 support and it's backed up with a limited lifetime warranty. I've got the black modules here in this kit, but it also comes in silver or white, so you can pick whatever's gonna match the color scheme you're going for with your system build. I love that, it's always nice to have options. All right, let's get one of these bad boys out. Woo, that's a nice looking memory module. These heat spreaders on here are made of aluminum and they've got that iconic wave or wing design that the Trident series is known for. This design's been around for a while, but it's had some minor tweaks and updates across the series over time. I think it's one of the best looking memory designs that's ever existed. These black ones have a shiny brushed middle section with the Trident branding on there, and they're sandwiched between two matte black sections at the top and bottom. And depending on which color you end up going with, the heat spreader designs are actually slightly different. One thing that makes these memory modules attractive is their relatively low profile. G-Skill kept the overall height down to just a very reasonable 44 millimeters, and that means there's gonna be a lot more flexibility and clearance and compatibility with other components in your system build. Things like CPU air coolers, really big ones that overhang the dim slots, aren't gonna be as much of an issue with these modules as they would with something taller. Just for a quick comparison, here it is next to some Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5. There's a pretty big difference in terms of overall height between the two. But even though these are not the tallest out there, I still recommend double checking clearance and compatibility with the other system components that you're picking if you're doing a new build, just because there's nothing worse than running into a compatibility issue when you're mid build. And trust me, I know from experience. The RGB is coming from a solid continuous light bar along the top. It's wedged in between the two sides of the heat spreader. G-Skill has their own app called Lighting Control, but you can also just completely ignore that and use motherboard software to control and sync up all your lighting with your other components. There's full support here for ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI, and ASRock systems. Under the hood, G-Skill's using memory ICs made by SK Hynix, and this kit's rated to hit speeds of 6800 megahertz at timings of 34, 45, 45, 108 with XMP 3.0. When you get them installed into your system and boot up for the first time, they're gonna run at default settings of 4800 megahertz with more relaxed timings than what's specced or advertised. But all you have to do is jump into the BIOS and enable the XMP profile. That's gonna set the frequency, timings, and voltage for you. Save the changes, restart, and you're ready to go. Most of you hardcore system builders are probably already gonna know that increasing RAM speed doesn't necessarily mean an increase in performance. But to see what we can get out of this kit, I did run it through a few tests. My test setup's running an Intel Core i7-13700K CPU in an ASUS Prime Z790 motherboard with an Intel Arc A770 limited edition GPU. To get the most reliable results that I could, I locked the CPU frequency to 3.4 GHz on the P cores and 2.5 GHz on the E cores. That way there's no variability due to the CPU boosting its clock speed up and down. So every single test is getting the exact same CPU speed no matter what. And then I ran every single test three times and then averaged the results just to make sure everything's consistent and repeatable. I tested system performance with the memory set to its XMP settings, so that's 6400 MHz at CL34, and then I downclocked it to 6000 MHz and tightened up the timings, and then overclocked it to 7400 MHz with the kit rated XMP timings. The synthetic benchmark in CPU-Z is a quick way to measure raw CPU performance. Essentially, there was no difference here in the single core or multi-core scores between 6000 MHz all the way up to 7400 MHz. In other words, raw CPU performance isn't really increasing due to faster RAM or reduced latency in this benchmark. I exported a 4K project in DaVinci Resolve 18 using H.264 compression at maximum quality settings and then just recorded the time it took the system to create the file. Both the XMP and overclock settings performed exactly the same here, while the slower 6000 MHz test took a few extra seconds. 3 Mark Time Spy is primarily a GPU benchmark, but it does provide some insight into how CPU performance can affect gaming. Rather than focusing on the overall combined score that this thing spits out, I'm instead showing the separate CPU and GPU scores so that we can see what's really going on here. GPU performance, unsurprisingly, didn't really change across the test, but CPU performance did scale by a couple percent. Forza Horizon 5 didn't really show any variation due to RAM speed whatsoever. Average FPS in the built-in benchmark was pretty much the same after every single test run, and I actually ran a few extra tests on this one just to confirm the results, and yeah, I kept getting the exact same thing. Cyberpunk 2077 showed a very small improvement of a few percent when RAM speed scaled up to 6800 MHz, but increasing the frequency up from there to 7400 MHz didn't offer any more performance. 
Once you're up around 6,000 megahertz with some decent timings, there's not a whole lot more performance to gain by pushing further, in most cases anyways. When it comes to gaming, you can squeeze out a few extra percent in terms of overall performance, but it's really gonna come down to what game you're playing and what resolution you play at. On the lighting side, it's really hard to argue that these modules aren't some of the best looking out there. That light bar looks awesome sandwiched between the two heat spreaders and it shines really bright in most settings. The G-Skill lighting control software isn't the most straightforward to use, but it does offer some of the familiar tools and settings to customize the lighting effects. It comes with quite a few different presets. Some of them are really cool. This one's called Glowing Yo-Yo. It's one of my favorites. But overall, the selection is more limited than what you can get with IQ from Corsair. I also tested it with Asus AuraSync and it worked perfectly with that too. So there's also that option if you don't want to use the G-Skill software. And like I mentioned before, it does support lighting control systems from the other major manufacturers as well. Overall, this is a really nice looking kit at DDR5. It's got that iconic Trident design that looks awesome in any build. Performance, and most importantly, stability at its rated XMP settings was rock solid. I spent a lot of time testing this kit and I didn't run into any stability issues. I didn't get any system crashes other than when I was really pushing the frequency to find the upper limit of where I could overclock it, but that's to be expected. I was able to push all the way to 7400 megahertz completely stable with 1.45 volts and that's without having to relax any of the timings. I actually got it up a couple hundred megahertz higher than that to 7600 but it took me 1.5 volts to stabilize it which is a little bit too high in my opinion so that's why I just dropped it down to 7400, went back to 1.45 volts and that's what I showed you with the testing in this video. Whether or not this higher speed memory kit's gonna be worth it to you is really gonna come down to your individual use case and what you value in terms of your hardware. You can save some money and not compromise much by going with a lower speed memory kit. That's just the way it is, at least on this current gen Intel platform. But if you're a high performance user or overclocker that likes to push your system hardware to the bleeding edge of performance, then this 6800 megahertz kit from G-Skill is a really nice option because it's got some headroom left over to allow for some manual overclocking. For the latest pricing and full list of specs and details, check the links down below in the description of this video. I'll have all that stuff for you down there. Give the video a thumbs up and get subscribed on your way out and we'll see ya.